a bare minimum. The poor do the opposite and have zero assets. People have to understand that it's not how much they make, but how much they keep, according to this book. And this is the essential principle that this chapter focuses on. And I have some tips from this chapter. Uh, asset puts money in your pocket. Liability takes it out of your pocket. Do not rely on schools. They are designed to produce good employees, not employers. It means don't need to have good grades. Emotions tend to lower financial intelligence. Don't be so sensitive. Okay. Cash flow always needs to be high because in that way you are wealthy and can't stay or survive at least some days for work. Finish. Very nice, very nice. So I will say your summary was very technical, which is okay, but the more technical your summary, the more exciting or boring? Mm, it's most of the time it will be boring technical. Right, that's right, yes. <laughs> Unless everybody's an accountant, right? If everybody's an accountant, ooh, yes, ooh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah. so that's, this is the idea. And Sadaf, you may not have heard, but I like to tell the book club members, when you make a summary, think of your audience as 11-year-old children. Yeah, yeah. And believe it or not, I wanted to write it in funny ways, you know, uh, very funny and laughing, but I thought that you may think, oh, this girl always do this. <laughs> she doesn't know anything. She's like kids always. <laughs> and well, I, I just <laughs> No, that's, that's, I understand. So, your summary was very good. It's technical. The first story, I like that you brought it and connected it. But what I actually liked the most were your four points at the end. That was really good. Santa, can you take us back to those uh, four points? Maybe you can split the screen, Santa, so you can type on the bottom and I can uh, read some of those points. Do you know how to do that? Ah, oh, great, 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 great. And slide me up just a little bit there. Um, there we go, there we go, good. So, oh, there. So, some tips. So, asset, so I'm going to fix your grammar here, too. Uh, it shouldn't be asset. We have to say assets. Assets put without the S. Santa, are you going to? Great, thank you. Uh, Santa can fix this along and then get rid of that S. Santa, why don't you just uh, completely change it? Don't worry about the colors and things. It's going to be too too much. So assets put money in your pocket, but liabilities take it out. And you don't have to say of your pocket. You can just say take it out because you already said pocket. That's great. I love it. I'll talk about that in a second. The next one, do not rely on schools. They are designed to produce good employees, not employers. Perfect. Nothing needs to be changed there. Uh, don't. Santa, can you fix that don't? Uh, that's a formatting uh, problem. That's why copy and paste is going to be easier. Great. Don't need to have good grades. I like it. Emotions tend to lower financial intelligence. Great. Yeah. Um, don't be so sensitive. Mm, okay. Mm, I'll accept that. <laughs> sensitive? Uh, maybe I want to change it. Don't be so sensitive. Emotional, maybe? Yeah, I think we have to say emotional, uh, not sensitive. For example, everyone wants a very romantic home, very big, very nice house, but, but it's just emotional. If you want to buy it by loans from the banks, it's not your assets. That's right. Very good. Let me go to the next one. Cash flow always needs, Santa, can you ask an S there? Cash flow always needs 
to be high because get rid of in because that way you are wealthy and can stay afloat let's add the word afloat stay afloat for at least stay afloat for at least a certain period of time yeah period so cash flow always needs to be high because let's get rid of because cash flow always needs to be high so instead of because so don't use a comma please cash flow always needs to be high so that way you are wealthy uh, I, I need to change this hold on cash flow always needs to be high okay let's do this cash flow always needs to be high to create wealth in order to and then delete so that way you are wealthy and can delete in order to stay afloat uh, and then for at least a certain period of time let's change it to stay afloat in case you lose your job stay afloat in case you lose your job your job very good okay so let me go back to the first one again the first blue point assets put money in your pocket but liabilities take it out bingo Sadaf, that is the key message and we'll talk about that later uh, don't be emotional yeah don't be emotional when it comes to money cash flow always needs to be high in order to create wealth in order to stay afloat in case you lose your job to stay afloat means to not go into debt d-e-b-t debt you don't want to be in debt um, and that's the idea excellent job I love your three points that was uh, the lifesaver for your story um, yes Great job. Very good. Okay, let me go to, I think Mahmoud is next. Is that right, Santa? If you got need to clean something up, go ahead. Are you ready, Santa? Okay. Mahmoud, I would like to hear your summary. Go for it, sir. Okay, but uh, first of all, I, I read the Arabic version. I make summary from the Arabic version and then translate it, okay? Okay. So maybe many... Maybe problem with the grammar or words. Okay. okay. I'm not going to worry too much. If I see a big problem, I'm going to stop you, okay? Okay. Go for it. If you're going to be a rich, learn some of the financial rules. You must know the difference between assets and liabilities. Assets are the things that put money in your pocket. Liabilities are the things that money out from your pocket. So, if you want to be a rich, be sure to spend your life with the purchase of assets. If you don't, then you are going to be from the middle class and, or, I think, or the poor. That's right, or is employees, em, employees strongly suffer in their daily lives, not because they don't get the money, but because they spend them, that money to buy liabilities. If we compare between the poor person, middle class, and wealthy person. Mm, I must read this. Poor yeah, person. Try it. Try it. Okay. Yes. Poor person position generate income. You gonna you go in expenses such as food, drink, clothing, rent, transport, transportation, and taxes. Uh, assets none. Liabilities none. Middle, middle class position, generate income, you go and expenses such as food, rent, clothing, rent, transportation, transportation, and taxes. Assets none, liabilities, credit cards, loans, premiums. Uh, wealthy person, 
assets shared in the stock market, real as real estate, in, in telecoach, in intellectual, intellectual property. Uh, I have this income, the event, the event, rent, <laughs> intellectual property, property rights, explo exploitation. 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 Yes. Yeah. Exploitation. Exploitation. Liability is none. Uh, the way your disposal and your income are what define your class. The, these ex examples answer the question that the, why an employee who has increased his salary but he still suffer from a lack of money. Whenever you direct directed money to buy assets, the high the higher the returns, the greater the greater the cash flow. Whenever cash flow greater than bleeding costs and expenses, you will increase richer and richer. Once again, great job. I'm going to say it was less technical than Sadaf's, which is good, uh, which is fine. It's a different style. It still wasn't easy for a child to understand, but I liked what you did by comparing poor and middle class and wealthy. Um, I wish you had given a, a better definition of wealthy. That's okay. That's okay. If we look carefully at your summary, we can see the difference. But it would have been nice to uh, hear a difference too. Um, so I, I did like that. Obviously, using a picture to show the difference is the easiest, but in a summary, we don't use pictures. In the book, however, he, he does use pictures, so that was really good. Uh, your translation was fine. Yeah, there are a couple little problems here and there, but nothing serious. I think uh, any English speaker is going to understand 95, 98% of what you wrote with no problem, with no problem. So it's really good. That's enough. Exactly. That's more than enough. Yep. And anyway, it's technical. It's it's still, to be honest, if somebody is watching this video and listening, they're probably like, what? What the hell are they talking about? Assets and liabilities, um, most ESL students know assets and liabilities. Most Americans know assets and liabilities, but actually they don't know assets and liabilities. Um, this is a very confusing subject, even in English, which is why uh, Guy Kawasaki, or not Guy Kawasaki, what's his name? Uh, Robert Kiyosaki, uh, which is why he wrote uh, the book. It's a very important subject, understanding assets and liabilities. So you started to show us the difference between assets and liabilities by showing poor, middle, and wealthy. But it wasn't enough. I still am confused. So let's go to Eva. Eva's summary of lesson two. Eva, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Uh, so, but um, I would like to say that it's not a real summary. Uh -oh. There are only um, thoughts uh, uh, about my feelings, experience by um, meeting this book because I, I still think that it's a kind of textbook. <laughs> let's let's let me change it then to from Eva's summary, Santa. Let's do this, Eva's takeaway, and that can be hyphenated, Eva's takeaway from lesson two. All right, go for it, Eva. Okay. So, um, Santa, can you put it higher? Uh -huh. 
So um, I listened to this chapter and first I thought uh, it was really easy. Later I realized I understood separate words, not the meaning, and I couldn't say what it was about. Yeah. Um, Americans, we, are, Americans too. Americans too. After reading, it was a bit clearer, but the final result was almost the same. <laughs> I think that's because I'm not financially educated, and that's what I said. That it's a textbook. It's something right. um, uh, what I'm not familiar with. Yeah, Santa, can you go down, please? Yeah, exactly. I supposedly understood the main formula about the relationship of assets and liabilities theoretically. The diagrams are simply uh, simplistic and have their logic. I cannot imagine this um, in real life with all the conditions of our society and especially me in the main role. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I like an attempt to explain the difference between being rich and wealthy. Yeah, me too, me too. The difference between um, being rich and wealthy. Then I have the two uh, things uh, yep. I, uh, about, um, because I, I need to explain this to 401k plan and mutual fund. Okay, I'll explain those. Before I explain those, let me go back. You said I like... Uh, the attempt to explain the difference between being rich and wealthy. So what, what, what is your understanding of the difference between being rich and wealthy? Um, so the main idea maybe is that um, you don't need have um, millions <laughs> Of money, but uh, you need to. Uh, uh, you um, can live without um, rest uh, for um, for a period of time. No, no. Okay. So okay, you're I'm almost back. right. Almost right. So, anybody else? What's the difference between being rich? and wealthy. One word is the answer. Marwa? Can I say this? <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe uh, if you are wealthy, uh, your money uh, is working for you. And if you are rich, maybe you are working for your money. Give me one word. It's too complicated. It doesn't make any sense. Nobody understands that. Give me one word. Mindset. What's the Mindset. Mindset. Ah, that's philosophical garbage. What's the difference between rich and wealthy? Oh, get out of here, Santa. Actually, no, Santa no, no. no, no. Do not give the answer. Mahmoud, that's... Thanks. Come on, anybody else? One word, one word. The difference between rich and wealthy is a job. Rich people need to work. Wealthy people do not need to work. That's the difference. So, we're, so I know a neighborhood in Chicago where all of, all of the houses are over a million dollars. They're huge, beautiful houses, amazing. And every one of those dads, or maybe moms, has to work. If they stop working, they might be okay for a month or two, but then they're going to lose their car, cars, they're going to lose their house. They have to work. The difference between rich and wealthy is a job. Wealthy people never have to work. 
they never have to work, and they still have money. Rich people might have everything. They might have a house and a boat and a car, and they might take vacations all over the world, but they have to work. If they don't work, they can't do it. They can't do it. Now, if, if a rich person sold everything and then lived in a tiny house with a tiny car, then maybe they wouldn't have to work. And actually, that would make them wealthy. But they're not satisfied with a tiny house and a tiny car. Their emotion is tied to a big house and a big car, and they want everybody to look at them. So they become a slave to their emotions, and they need to buy things to look wealthy, but they're not wealthy. They're rich. They're rich, which is cool. Being rich is nice, but if you're rich, you need to work. If you're wealthy, you don't need to work. So some wealthy people have a small house and a small car, and they're happy. They're super happy. Every day is wonderful. They don't need anything more. Those people are actually wealthy. Some, some wealthy people are really financially smart, and they don't work, but they still get money, and they get lots of money. They get huge amounts of money, so they go ahead and they buy a big house. But they pay cash, and they still have more money coming in. Those people are wealthy. The difference between rich and wealthy is rich people need to work. Wealthy people don't need to work. Does that make sense, everybody? So Marwa says it's a dream, not the reality. No, no, absolutely not. And, okay, so this is interesting to me. This is very interesting to me. Um, this is a very American thing the idea of uh, financial independence, the idea of being an entrepreneur. Can you write entrepreneur, Santa? An entrepreneur is somebody who starts a business. Now, starting a business could be a gas station, could be a restaurant, could be a publishing company, could be a architecture company it could be anything any type of any type of business makes you an entrepreneur and the idea with many americans is they want to start with one company and they want to work really hard to make this company really successful and then the idea is to duplicate the company so i start one business here and then I can expand the business by duplicating it. And every time I duplicate the company, I don't have to be there. I'm still just here, but now my company is growing. So after several years, I can sit back and retire and relax, and my company still grows and grows. Of course, I still work, but I don't have to work. This is a, a big dream of many, 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 many Americans. Not every American. As uh, Sadaf pointed out, most Americans have the mindset of going to school, getting a job, earning money, la la la, becoming a slave to money. But there is a big group of Americans who have the entrepreneur mindset, talking about Sydney mindset is important. And the reason I say it's American is because they did a study, and in Europe, that mindset is really tiny. In America, that mindset, the idea of creating your own empire, is very, very large. Uh, but it's, it's much smaller in, uh, in Europe. I don't know about the Middle East. I don't know about South America. I don't know about Asia, except for my experience. And uh, America is really positive thinking and uh, 
constantly uh, uh, the entrepreneur people constantly growing. So it's not a dream. I know people who do this and their life is great. One guy owns uh, gas stations. He's retired. He's my age and he doesn't do anything. He has he started with one gas station. It the gas station I remember was a little bit expensive, but they were just great service and really nice and friendly and now he's living a great wonderful life. Uh we've got my my neighbor uh is the same thing. She started as in real estate selling houses and she was the best you know, customer service real estate person, and she grew, she hired other people, she trained them to do exactly what she did, and now she's two years older than me, and she's at home, she has a swimming pool, and she's relaxing in her swimming pool every day. Uh, so this is uh, not a dream. People do it, and it's possible, and I'm sure it's possible uh, everywhere. So it goes back to assets and liabilities. So anybody, tell me, give me examples of liabilities. You can write them in the in the text in the chat room if you want. Assets, no, children are, well, yeah, children are, but no, children are not liabilities. Liabilities, give me a list. A farm, hmm. not a good example. It, yes, but not a good example. Land, not a good example. Okay, a uh, new cell phone, that's a good example. So, uh, uh, i6, iPhone 6. Don't write the name, Santa. We'll just make a list. iPhone 6. Keep going. Liabilities. A new car. Yes. No, Santa. Take babies off. A new car. A new car. Yes. Let's go back to Marwa. A new house. Let's do that, Marwa. A new house. Okay? Come on. Yeah, it's yeah, it seems I, I mean assets. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, right. We want yeah. liabilities. <laughs> Give me a couple more. A weekend house. Okay. No, Santa. No. A <laughs> new wife. Okay, a, not a new wife, but a diamond ring. Let's do that. A diamond ring. A diamond ring. Santa, stop typing. Oh, guys, you're missing the biggest liability. Come on. There's two, actually. A new house. Actually, Santa, after new house, write mortgage. Okay, shoes. Yeah, shoes will go with the iPhone. The iPhone uh, is shoes. iPhone dot, 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 things. Dot, 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 things, Santa. Things. Yeah, get rid of shoes then. Come on, there's another really huge liability, everybody. Maybe you don't have it in your country. Taxes, taxes. Credit cards, thank you, Mahmoud. Yes, credit cards, yes. These are liabilities. Now, look at the liabilities. Look at the liabilities. iPhone 6, shoes, a new car, a new house, a weekend house, a mortgage. Put that after a new house, please, Santa. New house, mortgage, a diamond ring. We can get rid of that. That goes with things, too. Taxes, credit cards. These are liabilities. So what, what are liabilities? What, what, are, what do these things mean? What does it mean? Money out. Yes. Money out. That's exactly what it means. Liabilities equals money gone. And what's important, every month. Money out every month. 
So we can add every month. Does that make sense? Sydney says no return. Usually, not always. So I'm going to get rid of that. Sometimes a diamond ring will keep its value. Sometimes a car, depending on the type of car, can maintain its value. So some things do maintain. A house can actually increase in value. So we have to be careful there. Sometimes there is return. But what's important for most people, every month, no saving. Every month, money goes out. Money goes out. Okay. Now, what, let's make a list of assets, assets, not, yes, liabilities you owe, that's right, assets, what are assets everybody, give me some ideas, this is the difficult one, real estate, now we have to be careful Mahmoud, we're going to write down real estate, um, but we have to be careful, dot, 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 Santa, real estate, dot, dot, dot. Land, okay, no, get rid of the question mark, we'll, we'll add to it. Uh, gold, yep, I'll accept gold. The dollar <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> yeah, here, here, <laughs> the our uh, our Egyptian pounds get so low. So uh, you you should uh, buy dollars to uh, to get an assets. <laughs> yeah, for me, that's bad news because I'm losing students. Uh, education, yeah, mm, that's a tough one. Real estate, even gold can be tough too. Savings, I'll accept savings. Stocks, yes, stocks. You can put currency, Santa, currency. Mahmoud, come on, I know there's one more that you know and I know. Come on, Mahmoud. Yes. Intellectual property. Okay. So real estate and land can be assets if you own it. If you have a mortgage on the land or the house or the building or the farm, it's not an asset. It's a liability. If you own land and you rent the land to somebody and you're making money and that money is paying the taxes and you have extra money, that is an asset. Once again, you buy a building with apartments, you paid cash, you do not own the bank any money, you rent the apartments. Every month, taxes are $1,000. Your rent money is $1,500. Your positive $500, that's an asset. If you're less than $500, that's a liability. Okay, so you're making money from your land or from your real estate, that's good. Gold, same thing. If gold is going down, you're losing money. Same thing with uh, stocks and currency. Generally, currency is money. Generally, investments like gold and stocks go up. But we all know it's possible they go down. But anyway, you have to be a smart investor. You have to have good people to help you. So gold, stocks, currency, those are supposed to go up. How can I get rid of taxes? You can't. Well, you can do what I do. Rent. If you rent, I don't pay property taxes. The man who owns this house, he pays property taxes. So that's how I save money. 
but he he's losing um, education yeah it depends on your education uh, so education can be an asset but uh, not it, it, it really depends that's a tough one education let's go to intellectual property what is intellectual property as an asset as an asset Mahmoud can you explain Uh, I think that for uh, for writers uh, who who want uh, write something and uh, write uh, for authors, um, yeah, um, a book, a book, yes, uh, authors, so, yes. So Mahmoud. Yes, Eva, you're right, too. So, Mahmoud, you have published a book on poetry, right? Yes. And uh, if somebody buys the book, you get a little bit of money, right? Uh, sure, Mom. Um, no, the, the publisher, the, the company, take money. <laughs> I don't I, take anything. <laughs> they, don't, they don't pay you? No. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's terrible. Well, if you become famous and you publish a book, every yes, if time... If I'm famous. Right, right. Okay. Um, so, if you create something once and it sells, that is intellectual property. You're, that's an asset. You made it one time. And it might sell for one year, it might sell for one week, it might sell for 10 years, but every time it sells, income is coming in, that's an asset, intellectual property. Eva says, a patent. Oh, that can be amazing. Yeah, a patent or a copyright is intellectual property. So if you designed this cup with a special design and you put it on... Amazon and people buy it that's uh, uh, that's an asset you're making money from this cup um, if you write a book and you write it once and then you sell it on Amazon every time somebody buys it you're making money you made it one time and you sell it that is an asset and that's the idea of stocks you buy a stock in a company and it goes up Maybe they pay dividends, and that's complicated. But anyway, that's the idea of an asset. So my classes, I have DDM Live. That's not really an asset because it's my job. I have to do that. But I have DDM Open, and I have Perf Open. I've made those classes, and I sell those classes. That is an asset for me. So I do have that as an asset. Does this make sense? So the whole idea. But, go ahead, Mahmoud. Go ahead. But your manager, you you don't have uh, someone uh, big than you. So your manager, you control I, your uh, work. Ah, uh, I'm an entrepreneur, but that's a job. That is a job. If I and if I stopped working today, um, I would be starving in two weeks. <laughs> I have no wealth, no wealth. Um, so, so that's why I'm creating my assets. I'm trying to create assets. But still, as you know, I left Korea after 25 years and I came to America. So when I came to America, I had nothing, no desks, no beds, no dishes, nothing. So I put a lot of money into liabilities. My liabilities right now are huge. Uh, my job is has income every month, and that's okay. And my assets are really small, so I need to build my assets. Hopefully, my assets will grow so much 
that they will pay for my liabilities, my credit card, my rent, my water, my internet. If my assets can pay for my liabilities, then I start becoming wealthy. Does that make sense? Yes, but this mean you rich? And well, I would I would put myself as middle class, middle class because I don't own a house, but I have a business and the business has something called equity. Do you know what equity is? No. Yeah. A poor, let me, I'll say this, a poor person really has nothing. When the poor person dies, there's nothing but probably some bills. When a middle class person dies, if you sell everything, you might have a little tiny bit of money. If you sell everything, you might have some money. So in my case, if I sold everything, probably not much, but... I have a business with an asset, DDM Open, Perf Open, which will continue to bring in money. So that kind of puts me in middle class, not rich. Um, I would say definitely not rich. Uh, Marwa has a question. I think Sydney did too. Sydney, go ahead, and then I'll take Marwa's. No, no, a question is... Um Yes, uh, wealth people, they do not work for money, right. for his survival and for his liability. Right. I, I suppose that's the, that's the basic difference. Yep, yep. They still work. You're right. They work, but they work because they like it or they want to grow even more. Yeah, that's right. They don't work for their liabilities. Exactly. Okay, Marwa's question was, what's the difference between... No, 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 it, no, it isn't a question. Uh, I say that this is the difference between both. What are you talking about? The, um, right, you right. are a job owner right now, and maybe in future you will be a business owner. Yeah, exactly. That's right. That's right. Uh, right now I'm an owner, but it's my job. But we and want you to be a job owner because we want you. <laughs> Well, see, and, and that's the thing, and that's what Sydney was just saying. I would love it if my assets were so huge that I didn't worry about liabilities, which means I can retire. But I know myself, I don't think I'd ever retire. I might limit myself to working, you know, just two or three days a week, but I love my job, so don't worry. If I get really rich... Um, I'll still be here, definitely. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Santa. Uh, Eva's question, what's a, a 401k plan and a mutual fund? We say 401k. That's what we say, a 401k. A 401k plan is a retirement fund. And basically what it is is every month, I get my paycheck and I can put $100 into my 401k. If I do that, my employer will also put $100. Sometimes they'll put $150. That's a cool employer. So the idea of a 401k is it's your retirement. And if you save $100, your employer will match and also save $100, sometimes more. Um, and then when you quit the company, you receive, or when you, you know, retire, you receive that 401k plan as your retirement uh, money. So you put in half that money, but the employer also put in half. Uh, it is taxable. They do, you do have to pay taxes, but those taxes can be later in the future. So that's the idea of a 401k. A mutual fund is 
different. A mutual fund, you have to buy at a bank or a financial company. And most people don't know about stocks. But they know that internet stocks are good. Or coffee shop stocks are good. Or they know that Asian countries, Asian economies are good. So what a mutual fund does is the fund buys only internet stocks or only coffee shop stocks. All of them, Starbucks, uh, Coffee and Bean, all the different ones. Or only Asian stocks, stocks in China, stocks in Korea, stocks in Japan, stocks in Hong Kong. And they, they just tie those all those stocks together. So I can take my $100 and put it into the Asian stock mutual fund or the coffee shop mutual fund, or the uh, internet mutual fund. And, and every month I can add money every month or just one time, and then the average of those stocks will probably increase. Some stocks will go down, but some stocks will increase. But I'm benefiting from all of them. So it's a very safe, if you go to the internet, and you have a hundred dollars, can you buy many, many, many different stocks? No. You can buy three or four stocks. And if those stocks go down, you lose everything. But when you go into a mutual fund, you buy a percentage of all those different stocks. So usually you're pretty safe. That's the idea of a mutual fund. It's the safe way to buy stocks. You don't buy one stock of IBM, you buy electronic stocks or internet stocks. That's the idea. Does that make sense, Eva? Eva fell asleep. No, no I didn't, but I was muted and didn't know if, if to write or say. Okay, yes, thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, this is a, now, I like this chapter, I like this chapter, because, um, personally, I know this information, I, you know, I understand assets and liabilities, but as I live every day, I don't think about it, so listening to this chapter made me think about that again, oh, yeah, 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 that's right, that's right. Um, I'm old, you know, I'm, I'm getting old, but I still have time to invest in assets. And that's what I need to do. I need to invest in assets. Uh, I need to cr keep creating assets. So for me, another asset would be YouTube. Uh, it's a very small asset, but every month YouTube sends me a little bit of money. So I need to keep making videos so that more people watch but I make the video once and I get you know two cents every month but if I have a thousand videos that's twenty dollars and if I have ten thousand videos that's two hundred dollars so if I have a hundred thousand videos that's two thousand dollars so if I keep producing this asset it will keep growing for me and eventually if $2,000 is enough for me, I'm not too greedy, I'll be wealthy and I'll be happy. So creating, and that's what's so difficult for everybody, is you need to think about what kind of asset can I create? Is it going to be a mutual fund? That's an asset. Is it going to be 
uh, land that I rent to a farmer, that's an asset. Is it going to be intellectual property like a book or a YouTube video? Um, you have to really think as a patent. You have to think about what kind of asset can I create? How can I create assets that sounds easy, but it's really difficult, and that's the key of this chapter. Oof. Hello? Hi. <laughs> Is anybody there? I am laughing. I give you a question. I understand, but I understood what you say. And but a uh, question. I'd like to listen to your opinion. Do you think it depends the moment of the society that you live in, based on the place where you live? For instance, if you have a one, if you were in a rich society. It's easier to have these ideas of opening your your challenges because um, the market is there. It's a question of you go in the direction of it. But um, if you live in a different society, it doesn't matter with the economic problems and corrupt corruption problems. It's very difficult you. I don't. I, I, I'm not saying that's impossible. Mm -hmm. Of course, I understand. Basically, it's very important. As you told, that's the same happened to me. I analyzed the better to what is the liability, what is an asset for me. That's that's the principal gain of this book. You to reflect about that. It's more. It's not only an English lesson. Right. It's um, a, a real life situation. But um, um, sometimes when you have an, in an economy and when the currency is it's not favorable to you, for instance, you have to you spend five units of money of your country to get one dollar or something like this. So it depends on the moment. As I told, I've written here the Great Depression. Sometimes you see no horizons. Of course, the power of our creativity is the best asset that we have. I agree when Mahmoud said the intellectual property. I didn't. I didn't not use as it, it means uh, the publisher or a writer. I would say our intellectual capacity of creative. Right. That's the reason why I say education is important yes. because it opens your horizons. Right. So this is for me. It's the best wealth that we have. Our capacity of. Uh, Searching for better solutions and solve the solutions that we have. For me, that's the best. Uh, when I say that's the mindset, because what I love this book is a question. I cannot support that. No, the question is how can I support that? That's it's a challenge, and, and life is a challenge. So it, basically, for me, I understand every every word. Fantastic, but it depends on the environment, on the place where you live. Of course, I cannot permit these limitations stopping me. I have to go and to go to other places like immigrants, they do, some people, they join, blah, 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 blah. But this is a, I'd like only to listen a few words of, about that, if it's possible. Sure. Um, I totally agree. The idea of education to open your horizons so that you can see possibilities is so important. Um, how you get the education is another question. Do you need to go to a school or can you go to, like, you know, the rich dad, poor dad? The poor dad go to school, the rich dad learn by experience. You know, that's, that's, that's a tough one. But yes, anyway, education, self-education, expanding your horizon so that you can be creative is super important. People talk about opportunity. 
you have to prepare for opportunity. If you're not prepared for opportunity, you'll never have opportunity. People talk about luck. Lucky is you prepared for an opportunity, boom, the opportunity came, boom, you took the opportunity and you were successful. That's what luck generally is in business. You need to prepare and education is the key. Okay. Where you are in the world absolutely makes a difference. You know, legal situations, the the safety of the environment, the corruption level, absolutely uh, it's important. Uh, this book was written for Americans. I think it can be applied to most other people, but yeah, it's America is definitely a yeah. asset. May, Chen, may I conclude to use an, uh, an expression that, that I recently learned? It? Sure. You can take the horse to the water. Happy Peppy. <laughs> Sydney's the greatest. You can take a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. <laughs> I'm so happy. Question. Happy. No questions. You guys know the deal. Next uh, hangout, we're going to talk about lesson three. Lesson three is uh, mind your own business. Mind your own business. The key, and if you guys are interested, uh, it's never too late to think about assets and liabilities. And... Uh, and what you can do about your assets and liabilities. Uh, being wealthy is not about being greedy. Uh, it's not about being greedy at all. It's about uh, being able to enjoy life. And everybody has a different definition of enjoying life. Some people want to party. Some people want to relax. Some people want to travel. Some people want to help. You know, there's no correct answer. But if you're wealthy, you're going to be able to do that. How do you become wealthy? By building your assets. So what is it that you can do? This is a personal question. We don't have to discuss it. It's a personal thing. But it's a really difficult subject, trying to figure out how you can create assets. It's not easy. It's very tough. Uh, but I hope that uh, somehow you're able to come up with some ideas and then perhaps start acting on those ideas to create your own assets. Uh, I hope. So yeah, that's it. I hope it wasn't too boring. Is it okay? We're, we're done. <laughs> Thank you. It was very good yes. session for me. Great, great, great. That's what I like to hear. I, I want to say something about my works. Yes. My, um, my ex-wife asked me, uh, why you write uh, poems and spend money to publish your books? And a few people buy this book. Um, I, I, my, my answer was uh, because I... I have a talent to write po poems, and I, I want to build my glory. Uh, so I don't care my about legacy. my legacy. Legacy, oh, okay. I think that's okay. Uh, yeah, I mean I don't care about money. Right, right. If I, yeah, only that. <laughs> No, no, no. And and actually, Mahmoud, when I was talking to you, you created videos about architecture and uh, a CAD, right? Yes, architecture program. And you sell those, right? Uh, 
Uh, yes, uh, again, please. Uh, you sell those videos, right? I, yes, uh, I have uh, uh, two for free and paid uh, tutorials. Yeah, and that's what I, because I, you're like me. Uh, you are creating these assets in this area. So that's why I wasn't actually thinking about your authoring, because I know uh, poetry is a very personal thing. Uh, but you are creating assets in the architecture field too, which is really excellent. Yes, but you talk to all world. I talk to only architecture people. <laughs> Arabic speaking architectural people, and they're all around the world. <laughs> Great. Being rich, oh, let me see. Being rich, ah, look at that. Being rich is having money. Being wealthy is having time. Not too bad, not too bad, yeah. Uh, yeah, not too bad. Thank you, guys. Have a fantastic couple weeks. I have DDM Live. Uh, I see a couple of you are DDM members, so I will see you today. And uh, enjoy lesson three. We'll talk about that next time. Don't be bored with this book. This book, uh, Marwa chose it. It's a great book. I do like it. And this book has the potential to uh, make your life better. It really does. It really does have the potential to make your life better. Wake up the giant within. Anthony Robbins, baby. Yeah. High five. Ah, you know. <laughs> Love that guy. Yeah, okay. That's it. That's it. Want to be happy? Uh, and, and, uh, and I really appreciate it when I I share this time with you guys because Same. all of you speak in a way that it's a different perspective of viewing and I really learn a lot with you guys. Excellent, me too, me too. I, I'm hearing perspectives from you guys all around the world. Isn't this cool? We've got Europe, we've got uh, the Middle East, we've got uh, South America, we've got uh, America, uh, North America, right here. I, um, now in this class, I had an, an idea of an exit. I'm going to sell Mahamud books in Brazil. <laughs> Translate them first. Mahamud, we're going to get a lot of money. <laughs> okay, I wait you. <laughs> you are my partner. <laughs> a public invitation. <laughs> Take no, care. I, I think I to make my books as uh, apps on uh, <laughs> iTunes or uh, Android. Brilliant. <laughs> yes. Okay. Marwa, what was that? Yeah, yeah, very little thing. Um, uh, it's out of our scope. Uh, I've just uh, finished uh, my biggest reading of uh, 400 novel, 400 pages. So yeah, I, I think that I um, I get an, a good progress in reading English. That's because of you. The novel called The Kite Runner, and I love it so much. I can't That's stop great. reading until I finished it. So thank you, Kuchin. I, I believe that uh, your support. Uh, well, well, that's great. It's uh, it's the motivation and time you put in, and uh, and it's really great to hear those things. Thank you. Excellent. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> I agree with you. I see you soon. Yes, I'll see you soon. Take care, everybody. See you Bye. later. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.